That's a lot of air. Mm, ooh, that looks amazing. Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. The keyboard is one of my main tools. I eventually landed on this classic. It's the Apple keyboard. Even though there's a bit of travel and a bit of resistance, I didn't really have the tactile feel that everyone was talking about. And obviously you want that. I ended up with a custom made WASD keyboard. I actually miss typing on this, um, but you can see how bulky it is. It's like a tank. I didn't have a wrist support. Maybe if I had wrist support, it would be better, but it was actually starting to hurt while typing. This is the Apple Magic Keyboard. No wires, I use it all the time. Same thing with the MacBook Pro 16. It's got the same type of keyboard. Uh, I got a phone call from, not UPS, but DHL. And it's right here, um, properly padded. So yeah, let's just get right into it and start. I don't have that fancy knife that all the YouTubers have, but this will work. So let's start by um, opening this baby and see what's inside and see how it works. And I changed my mind. Apparently you are supposed to have this super Rambo knife. So poke it a bit, ouch. All right, that's a lot of air. All right, so I ordered uh, the keyboard, the K3. I ordered some extra keys. Oh, wow, this is a small box. Holy, that's a compact keyboard. The palm rest, it's got the nice pads there so it won't slip around on your desk. That's pretty neat. A sleek, compact, low profile wireless mechanical keyboard. That sounds great. Low profile optical MX switch white. Yeah, bubble there that I can stab. I'll get that knife out of the way. It's my knife scare me. <sighs> Coffee break, sorry. <sighs> All right, let's tear this open. Mm. Keychron K3. So there's a nice quick guide. You got the Bluetooth mechanical keyboard that should be online in 2021. Ooh, this is super soft. Okay, it's protected. There's got the blue switches. Got these uh, padding, so it's raised a little bit, just a little bit of the, the desk. That looks amazing. It, it probably looks better in real life than it does on camera. This will help you take off the keys, and this will help you remove the actual switches if you want that. Uh, default is Mac, which is perfect for me because I'm on a Mac. That's the keyboard and let, let's fish out this one uh, for a size comparison. It's bulkier as expected, of course. It obviously is, but this is so super slick. And next to the palm rest, that's the kind of a footprint. Check the mic and make sure it sound right, boys. So with a plastic bottom and an aluminum frame, it feels a bit more premium than some of the full plastic ones. It's got a bit of a flex and it stands perfectly weighted and balanced on the table. It's elevated a tad, but if you'd like it even lower, you can replace the small rubber feet with some shorter ones that come in the package. It's got a 75% layout, 84 keys. You have access to the function keys as well as the arrow keys. That's something that you don't have on the 60%. It comes in two versions, one RGB backlight and one with a white backlight. $10 separate the two. 
I think it's a shame that human brain power went into something as stupid as dancing lights on our keyboards, but maybe you can impress some of your friends who never saw that on a keyboard. Funnily enough though, I did find a use for the lighting and that's when you actually need to see if you clicked a key. And so what I use, I use one of the light settings where you just get like tiny light when you press the key. Pick up your favorite switches during checkout. I got my hands on some low profile Keychron optical hot swappable clicky blues and some linear whites. And after typing on the white switches for a week, I realized that I would like to get a bit more actuation force as I tend to misclick. So I would probably opt for the black ones. Uh, the white ones are really light and the click registers right away. Uh, they require 30 grams and the blacks I think require 60 or 60 plus grams. So that's going to be the next on my list. Now the reason you got this keyboard is probably because you wanted a wireless one. So if you don't have that fancy looking braided aviator cable, you can use it with no wires at all, aka wireless. Now the battery supporting this is a 1550 milliamp hour battery to keep you going for up to 34 hours. Bluetooth 5.1, make sure you can pair it with up to three units. And I paired it up to my MacBook Pro, my iPad Pro and the iPhone. And the pairing is pretty straightforward. You hold FN and 4 for a few seconds and it should be visible in your Bluetooth settings. Now switching between the units is as easy as 1, 2, 3. Seriously, it's just FN, 1, 2 or 3. The keyboard goes into sleep mode after 10 minutes of idling to save your battery, but you can turn that off by going FN plus S and O together for 4 seconds. Swapping switches is super easy. Use the keycap tool to get your keycaps out of the way before you use the switch tool to grab your switches. Give it a good squeeze from the top and bottom and wiggle it from top to bottom, make it lose its grip. You might want to invest in a switch puller, but be aware that it's going to be metal against metal, so it could scratch your board. Now let's talk about accessories. A keyboard is the best version of itself when it's paired up to some accessories. Now you can get the wooden wrist support to make sure that you don't have to quit your job from wrist pain, and you can get a nice Safiano leather travel pouch. I didn't get the one myself because I, I couldn't really imagine traveling around with this keyboard, but I do see now that I actually want to bring this keyboard when I go outside to work. We're going to get right into what you probably came here for, that's typing tests. And as I said earlier, I have the linear white and the clicky blue. Now let's check out how they sound. All right, so the big question is, should you get the K3 or not? And I've been using it for probably three weeks and I've grown to like it a lot. Now, of course, there's pros and cons on this keyboard. So if we wanna start with the pros, it's lightweight. It's actually a good travel companion. It's compact and it's Bluetooth. So it's a wireless one, as well as a wired if you wish to. 
It's got a low profile, which gives it an ergonomic typing experience. And it's also a nice intro to the mechanical world of keyboards. And that's also one of the downsides because when you start typing on this and you dive deeper into the realm of mechanical keyboards, uh, you realize that it's gonna be very, very expensive to buy your next keyboard. Because then you start looking into the other mechanical nice keyboards, people who lube their stabilizers. And I mean, this is not as solid as the other mechanical keyboards with non low profile switches. Because these low profile switches, they are mechanical, but they're not mechanical mechanical. So you might get a taste of the mechanical world and maybe this is enough for you. If you're, if you're used to the, the Apple Magic keyboard, this could be plenty of mechanical feeling for you. Uh, so, I mean, it's up to you. If you really enjoy the current keyboard, if you are using the keyboard on the MacBook and you're happy with that, you don't really need this. It's around a hundred plus ish dollars, so I mean it's it's a it's a it's a nice little investment, and uh, yeah it's it's a good keyboard to type on and everything. So I'm 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 really happy with it. I haven't really decided if this is going to be my new keyboard or not, but uh, yeah. But if you want to give it a try, I say just go ahead. And the worst thing that can happen is that you sell it. If you like this and want to see more of this content, make sure you subscribe so you'll be the first to know whenever any new content is out. Thanks for watching. Hope to see you again next time.